Hello everyone, so today our topic is about evidence-based athletic physical therapy basic foundations. These are the objectives here. So the first one is to understand the hydrodynamic principles. Second is to understand the immersion physiology. Third, to identify the precautions and contraindications of aquatic physical therapy. Fourth is to apply the principles of hydrodynamics to the design of therapeutic interventions, exercise prescription and treatment progression. Now let's define what is aquatic physical therapy. It is a program using mechanical and thermal characteristics of water using partial or complete immersion in combination with the effects of movement. It evokes short term and long term adaptation mechanism of a person with deranged biological system using specific stimuli to create biological and thus therapeutic effects. So what are the aquatic assumptions? Water will facilitate recovery by enabling activity and uniquely challenge the movement. It also helps to achieve specific goals with transition to land by measuring the gains on land, uh, use of hydrodynamics in desirable movement patterns and can safely challenge the weight bearing and balance activities. Aquatic advantage. So the four main hydrodynamic principles are First is buoyancy, graduated hydrostatic pressure, third is turbulent drag and the final one is thermal effects. So what is this buoyant force and what do we understand from this picture? So first let's understand what is buoyancy. Buoyancy is the force experienced as an upthrust which acts in the opposite direction to the force of gravity. Now a body is in water is therefore subjected to two opposing forces which we can see here centering a center of gravity and center of buoyancy. Now when the weight of the floating body equals the weight of the liquid displaced and the centers of buoyancy and gravity are in the same line. So the body is in stable equilibrium. If the centers are not in the same vertical line the two forces which is the center of gravity and center of buoyancy Acting on the body will cause it to roll over until it reaches a position of stable equilibrium. So you see here the center of buoyancy and gravity are not equal to each other because of the different tissue densities in the human body. So the rotation torque effect will cause it to challenge to the upright position. So this is the buoyancy as I said the gradual offloading of the body weight is proportional to the depth. Now upthrust forced when out of vertical used to assist or resist the movements and the body symmetry will be affected. Turbulence and drag. Viscosity and thickness of water creates a variable pressure. It can generate waves which is small waves and large waves. The small waves will create a massaging effect and the large ones will challenge to stability. The end range drag can assist in the range of motion. It can be assistive or resistive. It can be self-applied or therapist directed. It can challenge balance. It can challenge joint stability, alter the muscle sequencing and also group turbulence. What are the thermal effects? Thermo neutral 33.5 to 35.5 degrees Celsius requires no compensatory mechanism that is vasoconstriction and shivering. Warmth causes peripheral vascular dilation which is heat transfer. Uh, sensory overflow increases the person's pain threshold by dampening the perception of pain since the temperature shares the same spinal tract that is dorsal horn as pain. Improves collagen distensibility after 10 minutes. Warmth induces relaxation that is more than 36 degrees Celsius. It reduces the spasticity. Cooler temperatures for more active therapy or for heat sensitive conditions in MS, thyroid conditions and EDS. Short term physiological adaptation of immersion, um, venous compression and lymphatic compression, they both will increase the blood volume. So this will decrease the dependent edema and pain. Increase heart stroke volume, distension of the right atrium, heart rate in decreases due to more efficient pumping. So at 10 foot cool water immersion, it gets increased systolic and diastolic pressure which is equal to adaptation. Fluid displacement effect from the periphery to the central core due to hydrostatic pressure. There will be increased 
renal output, decreased endocrine system, and creatinine tolerance. There will be an increased blood flow to the muscles. In chest deep water, there is 60% increase in the work of breathing, reduced joint compression and weight bearing, ground reaction force sustained despite the cadence differences, and reduction in the sympathetic nervous system, and there will be potential to, the reduce, to reduce the fear of falling. Complex physiology. Brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which is BDNF, which will lead to nerve regeneration and also protect from atrophy. The neutrophils will lead to immunity. Uh, cytokines will increase. ENOS will increase the vascular compliance. PGC1-alpha will prevent the muscle wasting, increases the cellular repair. IGF-1 stimulates the cellular repair. NTE, NT4 will stimulate growth. Blood glucose increase the receptors and insulin efficiency. Blood pressure will reduce the systolic pressure and lipids are mobilized from the adipose, ANP released from fat cells, decrease ADH, uh, renin, aldosterone will reduce the somatic nervous system. Pediatric immersion, less tolerance to heat or cold will lead to equilibrium. Focus or constant concentration, play communication, lead to pictographs, voice, and entry and exit challenges, toys and equipment will be leading to functional goals. Routine precautions, skin conditions, that is management rules per facility and per doctor. Option is staggerdom bandaging, European post-operative protocol, TKR is within two weeks, managed incision. Tracheal tube, oxygen, catheter, uh, colostomy and incontinence, fear of water, non-swimmer, epilepsy, swallowing difficulties, chemical sensitivity, altered sensation, hearing, visual impairment, morbid, obesity, heat sensitive, mode of entry to pool, infections, all to be assessed per individual. So what are the contraindications? Acute vomiting or diarrhea. Medical instability following an acute episode, including CVA, DVT, PE, etc. To have an uh, allergy to chlorine or other pool disinfectant. Medicated skin patches not to be worn in warm water pool. Angina at rest. Shortness of bre breath at rest. Uncontrolled uh, cardiac failure. And weight in excess of emergency recovery equipment. Example rescue board. The aquatic advantage. So there is client advantages and therapic therapist advantages. So client advantages, it's able to maintain the upright with less effort. It's safe to fall, just get hair wet, and uh, it eases the load on joints for those with arthritis. It relaxes and reduces the anxiety. Distracted by play. Slow assisted movements and fast resisted movements. Therapist advantages, low load, no carrying since cl client is supported by buoyancy or equipment. Can challenge movement gradually using uh, turbulence. And greater balance work using slower response speed. And ease of changing exercises using speed, range, direction since isokinetic. For all aquatics, the some of the prerequisites are Security of the client, therapist's ability to maintain the balance, and what are the aims? That is security, in that uh, we need to know the breath control, and next is control, Will under that we have equilibrium and movement fluent, which is under that we have relaxation. Fundamental application, just immersion without movement produces physiological effects, be aware of cardiac or respiratory system response. The heart rate differences must be accounted for in training parameters, mostly concentric work, eccentric not easily achieved. We think about the control of upward movement or buoyancy. Unable to do one repetition maximum for our exercise prescription, so use observation of partial instability as indication of muscle fatigue and optimal speed or reps. Functional sit-to-stand is an 
assisted movement when immersed, total body workout needed to maintain the vertical position, depth is critical. When submerged to the collarbone, the client feels only 15% of their body weight. This makes balancing harder, breathing, work, breathing harder, that is the weight on the chest, but arm and leg elevation will be easier. When walking through water, they will have to drive their immersed body surface area through the water, which requires trunk muscle activation. Forward walking engages abdominals, while backward walking engages back extensors. Often the goal is to reduce the depth in order to progress to land exercises. Offloading helps alleviate joint pain from compression, increases the peripheral blood flow and tissues ability to stretch. Next, we're going to talk about the resistance variability, speed. If the speed of the movement is double, the resistance increases four times as drag force is proportional to the speed squared. Watch for the client's loss of form or posture to indicate the appropriate speed of movement. Surface area. Directly proportional to resistance, it is dependent on the shape. Think about aerodynamics. Use hand positions of open palm, panel like for maximum surface area, fist reduced surface area, and slicing minimal surface area. Adding trunk movement plus limbs increases the movement, moving surface area, moving through the water during arm exercises. Equipment like paddles, fins can add surface area. Lever up. Bending the elbows or knees reduces the limb length. Open palm versus fist lengthens the arm. Plantar flexion or fins extend the limb. Some goals and techniques. Strengthening. Speed, lever arm, stop start against own drag. Challenge to break surface tension of water. Horizontal abduction in all planes and on water surface. Full body versus single motion. Gait. Alter depth, drag, turbulence, accelerate, decelerate, speed or rhythm, lunge, backward, slow motion, great for warm up or cool down, never just walking, add challenge, um, visual talk, equipment, proprioception, increase sensory stimuli, enhances the cues of position sets. Move into desired positions and hold, no visual, stop, start, move through a pattern of movement. Balance. Maintain static with external turbulence. Walk to targets on floor. Upper limb asymmetry. Visual and cognitive challenges. Single leg stance. Changing support. Wall noodle. Nothing. Function or task oriented. Client's goal. Action through water. Multitask with cognitive challenge. Tandem walk while singing. And stairs. Sit to stand. Throwing or catching or pushing, then range of motion at the end of active range, pause to allow water motion to stretch at end range. Pull supported or horizontal climb through water using the drag force to create a traction or stretch. Pain management, breathe with movement, slow, large amplitude, music, neck beat, small turbulence will leading to massage, which is self-applied. Low load facial release and a uh, chi program. Reduce spasticity, trunk rotation, large amplitude, relaxed horizontal positioning, co-contraction. So these are the examples you can see. And this is the equipment you can use for aquatic physical therapy. The basics. Be aware of the hydrodynamic principles. Sorry, use of the hydrodynamic principles. Be aware of the immersion physiology. Always think about the precautions and uh, contraindications. Always try your apt exercises uh, yourself with, before you prescribe them to your client. Small adjustments in water are powerful. People often work harder in the water. Perceived effort is less. So be creative and be safe. And these are some of the resources. Thank you.